Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Zoom Into Wine. It's time for the show and your host, Ian Blackburn. So it's with great privilege I, I get to introduce you to Olivier Humbrech, uh, Master of Wine from Alsace, France. Good morning here. Good evening to you. Sir. Good morning to you. And we're now going to talk about the 2016 uh, Zind which will be used on Saturday night. And uh, it's uh, featured on our website, the 2016 Zind. All right, so let's talk about this uh, 2016 Zin Humbrecht Z016. Now, if uh, those of you at home can notice, that is not a two on the date, it is a Z. And that's because this is a, uh, fairly non-traditional blend, right? That's not uh, part of the uh, Appalachian origin control? Yes, it's a uh, vin de France or what we used to call vin de table in the past in France. And in, it comes from a, one of our very good vineyard called Clovins Bull in uh, Hunavir, uh, where we, you know, uh, sell, uh, produce Riesling, Pinot Gris and Gewurz. And uh, when we purchased this clove back in 1987, um, some of the vines planted there, we had to pull them out because they didn't correspond to our uh, requirements of uh, quality clones and uh, uh, rootstocks and, and things like that. So the part nearest to the forest, um, we didn't really know what to plant with. And our idea was to make a classic Pinot d'Alsace blend mixing Oxavoir and Pinot Blanc. And uh, when we were in the vineyard, my father had a very good friend of his who came from Burgundy and they were talking about vineyard and dirt and soil and all that, you know, like two growers would, would share things like that. And uh, looking at this um, uh, old limestone called Muschelkalk, you know, the very yellow breaks into very flat stones, easy to make walls with. Um, he, he said, oh, in my village in Burgundy, um, I would plant chardonnay in the soil like that. So my father looked at me and said, that's a damn good uh, idea. And let's replace a Pinot Blanc, which is complicated to get good quality material with Chardonnay, where we have more access to better kind of clones. So we planted the 1.3 hectare of Chardonnay and 0.7 hectare of Oak Savoir, started to make the blend and all that, not thinking, you know, where we allowed to do it or not. And a few years later, customers came to us and said, you're not allowed to do this, Mr. Humbrecht. So you pull out the wine, you make sparkling wine, because that we are allowed to do it, or you declassify the wine to Vin de Table, which we did. And the first vintage that we officially released as Vin was the 2001 vintage. And we have been carrying on to do it like that since then. So it's two third Chardonnay, one third Oxawa, made the Aldas way, not like in Burgundy. We don't use small barrels. We use, like the other wines, larger casks. It's a vineyard that gives a very elegant, racy, high acid, uh, you know, uh, quite a, a, a almost strict austere type when it's young. And if you give him a few uh, years of age, like the 16 should really now start to open up. You get that combination of white fruit, minerals coming out, very elegant palate, never very high alcohol, dry and uh, great acidity. Yeah, it's a very nice wine. It is showing so amazingly well. It's got this beautiful minerality on the top. And, and you said that's limestone, not granite? No, no, it's limestone. Um, you know, limestone, there is a, a lot of different types, uh, depending on its age and moment of formation, fire, or deep in uh, the sea or close to the, to the, the, sea, to the, the continent. And this one goes back about 200 million years old. It's a mushroom with it's, it's a dolomitic type of limestone. So full of seashells and all that. It really is very, very close to the Bajosian uh, that you find a lot in Burgundy, for example. And it's part of the Trias uh, period. So very poor, very rocky, not very rich. And, but the vineyard, the vineyard is quite higher up in altitude, very close to the forest. And um, uh, hence the delicacy of the wine. It's not, it's not the kind of uh, wine that will ever have, you know, a lot of sugar or too much alcohol or something like that. Yeah. Oh, beautiful, beautiful wine. And uh, I've seen this in many different incarnations, and it, it, it it's very consistent and um, and very and ages like I, 
you know, like a like a giant. It's just nice slow evolution. Um, when what do you think the uh, the time horizon is for this 2016? Is this a 10 year wine, a 20 year wine? What do you think? Well, I would say you know um, it's uh, uh, I. I can only go back to how, since we started to produce it to 2001 and, and any vintages we've made is still uh, showing very, very well today. Yeah. But um, I don't want to frighten people, you know. Uh, but I would say that a really, really nice optimum would be, you know, between five and 10, six and 12 years, something like that. So the, the 2016 now uh, being five year old is really entering that phase where it's enjoyment time at the moment, you know. And um, I would keep it safely another five or six years. But if you want to have fun and lose a bottle in, into the, you know, into your cellar and find it in 10 or 15 years time, I don't think it would be uh, a, a major problem, you know. Uh, it's, it's if, so great. if you don't mind, I'll show you the vineyard if you allow me to share again. Sure, sure. So it's, it's really uh, uh, a beautiful place. That's the Clovinsville. That's the famous church of Unavir. Uh, and the whole clo is this little hillside there, and the Chardonnay is the one closest to the forest uh, on the left side of the vineyard. Great. Well, a, a, a great find. Um, I wanted to thank you for explaining it to us, and uh, I can't uh, recommend the wines of Alsace enough for your cellar, for the value proposition, for the great cuisine, um, they're year round and there's multiple different styles and, and varieties that, uh, just kind of accent things a little bit differently, but, uh, this Zind wine is a treasure and we love it. So thank you very much for telling us all about it. You're welcome.